Hey, good morning, everybody. All right. As you all know, I've been kind of fiddling around, putting this thing together. It's the, it's the uh, MSI, well, it's an MSI case. I was going to do a full build. I decided, why do a full build? I have plenty of good components. So, I picked up the case. I have a 6900 XT Ultimate AMD power color going into it. And it has a Asus B550E motherboard. It's a it's a Strix, really, really, really nice board. The BIOS have already been flashed. Everything is right up to the newest date. Anyway, so I went water cooling. And after I put the cooler in, I was looking, look at, I, I can't, I can't get over this. There's got to be 30 feet of fan rubberized cable on this. I was like, I, 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 I like thermal take, but what are you thinking thermal take? Seriously? There's really, I mean, there's really no need for this. So it hooks right up to the hub. No problem whatsoever. But I'm pulling them fans out. I always go with something as space saving as possible. So today I decided to go change this 240 millimeter thermal take out with a ice fan 240 from ID cooling. Very nice, very nice stuff. I, I it's it's much quieter than the fans that come with it. It is specifically made to put on a radiator for water cooling. Nine blades. It's got a good strong high static pressure pull to it. It's RGB lighting. If you like that, if you don't, you don't need it. It has a little bit, very mild, just enough to give a little bit of a glow on the side, which I kind of like. I, I think they did a good job. But what's more important is I'm eliminating... Yeah, I'm eliminating all this for this. That's what this video is going to be about. It's a sturdy fan. Again, it's very quiet. When the fan's going, it's pulling in air this way, pushing it out. On this system, I already have two nice fans in the front that are going to pull air in. One in the back that's going to push air out, and the one, the two on the top are going to push the air out because there's less friction or drag coming through the front. I decided to run three fans as an exhaust because there's going to be friction put up against the radiator, so kind of makes a little bit of sense to me, anyway. To me. Well, if it makes sense to me, it probably doesn't make sense. Anyways, this is what we're going to do. So, oh, yeah, let's get some little stickers. And it comes with all of, as you can see, it comes with all of the fan screws. This is how you know it goes into a radiator. It's a long screw that goes into a radiator. And you got some stickers if you want to put the ID logo on there, which I don't think it matters because it's underneath and you're not going to see it. So we'll see how this looks in a minute. Okay, I figured I'd just bring it in for a little bit of a close-up shot. You can see it has a one terabyte M.2. It's not a straight up 4.0, it's a 3x4. So it, it's still plenty fast enough unless you're going to be counting microseconds. The video card itself recommends a 900 watt power supply. That's like ridiculous. That I think they gave that number just for the top line. Um, a 750, 850 will run it with no problem unless you're going to go crazy with overclocking. I put all Asia Hoss cables in. I, I kind of like the look of the square. I like the look of the square cooler. I ran the hose around this way because it's the only way I could get the TT on there. I didn't want to flip it around that way and have the holes running around the back. It wouldn't look right and I couldn't put it up front because of the front fans. 
it just didn't it wouldn't make sense so just a quick look at how this is going to work you can see where that 40 feet of cable um comes from okay folks up to right now you can see the radiators out and you can see i'm sure you agree with me that this is kind of a this is a lot of wire for two fans i mean i get it it's rubber coated i don't know if this is supposed to go underwater or i don't know but yeah it's it's wow it's a lot okay so here we are it's on took a couple minutes nothing big so not only does it have by far it has nice solid rubber anti-vibration pads on both sides the wiring is just a different animal altogether and you you eliminate four screws and you're not losing you're not losing any strength because it's all one piece you actually are probably getting a better airflow because you don't have spaces in between the fans which i always can feel the difference when there is spaces it just blows out all over the place so yeah, it's a nice way to save up more and actually get some extra rough fan screws. Get this in. We'll be done. Okay, so now we got a little look at this. Oh, so you can see we went from... I attached the ARGB to the, the hub that came with it. And I put, got a little header over here. I'm not going to leave it dangling. I'm not going to put it that way, certainly. I'm going to put a little bit of an extension on it and get it down here. So we went from that to that. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what? That's insane? Yes, it is. Crazy. Just to the hat. You can't go wrong. All right. Everything's done with this except for me to put in windows and put the beast in. And I took it out of the box before because, yeah, I really haven't checked to see how it's going to fit. So I don't know if you like the beefy look, the open look, the tight look, whatever. But this is the look. This is the card. 3-8 pin cables. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Well, we got a couple inches between that and the front of the board. So, it, it's, I think it's going to look nice. And I'm going to change this clear. These clear over to the, the black once I get everything connected. Because I think they go, yeah, they go in this, this direction. So. Yeah. yeah they go in that direction. Why don't they just make it universal and have them all go the same way? Now I gotta twist it all around, but I'm gonna put the black ones on anyways, the cable guides, so no big deal. Once I separate them all, put them all on, it's gonna look nice. Wow. Okay. So there we have a look at it. I'll tell you what. I did benchmarks with one of these against my 3080s Asus Rogue Strix. And it's, this has its own version of um, ray tracing. And they're also coming out with that super resolution stuff that they, it's like a, their version of DLSS, the uh, deep learning. And I ain't gonna lie, this card looked as good, if not better, than my 3080 in all the games. I played all the Call of Duty, all the Battlefield from five down I did all the benchmarks it actually pumped more numbers direct stack 12 the whole nine yards um, halo remastered version it outframed 
my 3080 in everything in every one of them but again this is a this is a a, a world record holder right here well not this one itself but and the reason that I, I don't mind AMD for video cards. I think they're great. Myself, I won't go over to them for the one reason is I do a lot of even little editing like this. The world of a difference when you can use the NVIDIA chip on the NVIDIA card to convert your videos. It's hours of saving time. With the AMD, if you, you can, it works. But you're going to be doing it on you're going to be doing it on the uh, was the H264 or 260 you know 265 is the Nvidia 264. It, it it's all CPU. The Nvidia chip runs it through the graphic card, burns right through it, quick, beautiful. Um, so that's the main reason. Other than that, I probably would go over to AMD. All right, I am done for the day. I think it's going to be a nice build. Whoever's going to get this is going to get it for a fantastic price, and they're going to be getting, I think, more than what they paid for. Not going to be no complaints. Everybody have a nice day.